In this video, we're going to look at these three topics. What a random variable is, discrete random variable, and probability distribution functions. All right, let's first look at it, what a random variable is. Well, um, we'll look at the definition here in a second, but a random variable is really just a way to generalize probability problems or probability um, experiments. And a random variable is really a function that assigns numerical values to possible outcomes of the experiment or all of the values of our sample space. So let's take a look at a, a quick example. Suppose we want to flip a coin and then throw a die. So we got a coin and a die results. Let's say that our random variable will be to assign values such that if it's a if a tail ap appears, then we'll give it a negative number. If heads appears, we'll give it a positive number, and the number that we'll assign to it will be just whatever the value is on the die that we throw. So I've got listed here all the possible outcomes of that experiment. Tails in one, tails in two, and so on. And then heads in one, heads in two, and all the way down to heads and, heads and six. All right, so we're gonna assign those values, numerical values. Since this is tails in one, this will be a negative one tails in two, this will be a negative two, and so on. And then for the heads, it'll be a positive values. So this one will be one, this one will be two, and so on. So our random variable, X, we'll call it random variable X, we'll give it a, a, a capital letter X, and we'll say that our random variable X has all of these range values, minus one, minus two, minus three, through minus six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's define now what a discrete random variable is. A discrete random variable is a random variable whose range space is either finite or countably infinite. Basically, you can count the, count the, the items in the range space. Uh, the example we just looked at was a, a discrete random variable. Let's look at an example here. We're going to flip a coin until a tails appears. The random variable will be the number of flips. So we're going to keep flipping until we get a tails. So obviously, we're going to at least flip once. So we'll have uh, the first value that we could have is 1. And obviously, we could keep on going forever. Uh, it's possible, however likely, to get you know an infinite number of heads. So we can count these obviously, because we can count each one of them, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So therefore, it's countable and infinite, and therefore, we this is a discrete random variable. Now, let's look at another example. Suppose we have a machine that makes bolts, and the length of the bolts that it makes can be anywhere from one inch to two inches long. Now, <clears throat> it can be any value in there. Supposedly, we could measure it to an infinite precision, then the range space for this random variable is any value x such that x is between 1 and 2. Now since it can be any any value in there, this this random variable is uncountable um, because it's a continuous range from 1 to 2. We can't count that and therefore this is not a discrete random variable. Uh, we'll find out later this is a continuous random variable and which we'll deal with uh, later on in other videos. So now let's define the probability distribution function. And from now on, we're going to be dealing with discrete random variables uh, in these videos. And <clears throat> uh, mostly we'll be dealing with uh, finite random variables, but this will also apply to um, infinite, infinitely countable random variables. So suppose our random variable can take on these values, our x1, x2, x3, and so on. and uh, therefore, we're going to define the probability distribution function for this random variable as some function f, where we're going to define the function for each value in the range space. So f of k, x, sorry, f of x sub k will be basically the probability that a random variable will be equal to x sub k. And therefore, the properties of this function are that it will be greater than or equal to zero, and if we sum them all up, we should get 1. All right, so let's look at an example. 
of a discrete random variable and we're going to find the probability distribution function. Okay, we roll a die until a 5 or a 6 occurs or until we roll four times. If, it, if we roll four, time, four times and we don't have a 5 or a 6 then we'll stop. Let's say the random variable will be the number of rolls that we have and we are going to find the probability distribution function for this. Alright, so the first thing you, we want to do is figure out, since it's a discrete random variable, figure out what the range space is or what the range is for the, for the random variable. So since we can, we're rolling a die um, up to four times and the random variable will be the number of rolls, then it'll be the numbers one, two, three, or four. Those are the only possible outcomes. So our probability distribution function will be a function, we'll call it f, and we'll have that function defined for each of the range values. So f of 1 in this case will be equal to the probability that our random variable x will be equal to 1, and so on. Pro f of 2 will be the probability that our random variable is equal to 2, and so on, f of 3 and f of 4. So we'll have to define those four values. So let's look at them. Probability of x equal to 1, what does that mean? That means that we're going to roll, we'll, we'll roll only one time, <clears throat> and in that roll we'll get a 5 or a 6. And so since there are two possible outcomes, and they're both equally likely, one's, they each have a probability of 1 6, our probability of getting a 1 will be 2 6, and that of course is 1 3rd. Now for our f of 2, we'll have the, the probability that x is equal to 2. Now to get a 2, we have to roll a 1 through 4 on the first roll, and then a 5 or 6 on the second roll, and then we'll stop. Since we have a 1 through 4 on the first roll, that probability is 4 6, and 5, through, 5 or 6 on the second roll, that'll be 2 6, and therefore the probability will be, you know, after you work that out, will be equal to 2 ninths. For x equal to 3, we'll have 1 through 4 on the first roll, 1 through 4 on the second roll, and then 5 or 6 on the last roll. So you can see what those probabilities are, and that ends up being equal to 4 27ths. And finally, the probability that x is equal to 4, we're going to roll 1 through 4 on the first 3, and then the last one, we can actually roll anything. We're going to stop on 4 anyway, so we can end up with any, any value on that last one, 1 through 6. And so that'll be 6 out of 6. We get, we don't really, that'll be a probability of 1 that we'll get all, all those values. And so multiplying those through we get 8 27ths. Now remember the properties that we had for the probability distribution function were that they ought to be positive, which they are, and also we need to have the sum of them be equal to 1. And I didn't do the, do the work, but if you add all these up, you do, it does equal to 1. So that checks. Now, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to do was to make a plot so we can see what it, what it looks like, that function. What I'll do is, is just for each of the range values, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'll draw a line up that indicates the value for that function at that point. And so the, f the first one was one third, the second one was two ninths, the third was four twenty sevenths, and then finally eight twenty sevenths. And then I just plot that as a function of x.